Blue Mountain High School to fight tonight for Schuylkill League basketball action. This is our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. The Crimson Tide from Possible with a record of 4-0 and 7-4 overall take on the Eagles from Blue Mountain. They check in with a record of 4-1 and 9-3 and overall. Hi and welcome everyone. Al DeCarl alongside Ben Tannis. So glad you could join us tonight. And we're into Schuylkill League and we expect a great matchup between two teams that are very familiar with one another. Yeah, this is a matchup I was really looking forward to. I've been watching this matchup, scouting these two teams for years. Uh, you know, this is a crazy rivalry, and I'm really excited to be here. And as we look at this matchup, Jake Wartell is in his third year as the head coach for Pottsville. They're coming off a win against Panther Valley. They won that game by a score of 65 to 50. One of their key players is Ryland Mightlock. Yeah, uh, Rylan, he's averaging 10 points a game. They, they struggle to score a bit, and he's the guy that they go to to look to score. But uh, what Coach said before the game is what – impresses them most about him is his effort uh, he's constantly giving effort on the offense and defensive end of the floor he's their energizer Brenny they go as he goes well on the other side for Blue Mountain Dustin Wirt has been here 20 years actually that's as the head coach he's been here more than that and obviously a player as well they're coming off a loss against Elko they've lost three in a row after starting off with nine straight wins so they look to rebound against their arch rivals here Isaac Thomas he's got size he's got game yeah, and he's a guy who looks the part. He's 6'5", he can run the floor, he's got moves inside, he's got nice touch around the basket. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys where you look at maybe he could play at the next level and he's only a junior. Now let's see what happens. We've got a good one for you. Pottsville Blue Mountain, our D11sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. We are back here at Blue Mountain getting ready for the matchup between rivals Blue Mountain and Pottsville. Joining us right now is a Blue Mountain grad and a D11 sports student reporter now at Villanova in his second year, and it's Ryan Cofield. He joins us with his first report. Should be in for a good one here tonight at the Eagle Nest in Schuylkill Haven, Pennsylvania. Blue Mountain and, and Pottsville are the top two teams in the Schuylkill League Division I, and both teams looking to get a, a marquee win over each other here. Last time these two teams met, last year was in the district playoffs where the game went to overtime in a highly contested battle so both teams coming off of good starts to the year Pottsville took their lumps to some bigger teams like Williamsport and Hazleton early on but are really starting to hit their stride while Blue Mountain started the year 9-0 and but hit a rough patch this last week here and went 0-3 in their last three so both teams are trying to look to get on track here and take an early lead in the Division One race at the flip around to the second half of the season back to you guys back in the booth. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot. Uh, we welcome him back, uh, doing a great job down there at Villanova, uh, helping out with the football team, game manager, and uh, I think he said he was taking 18 credits this past semester. That's a lot of credits. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff going on for a young man's schedule. <laughs> for sure. Uh, getting ready for this match. I mean, you know, we talk about this, and, you know, interesting that these teams play two or three times a year. And Pottsville has owned Blue Mountain. That's the only way to say it. And you go back to 2017, 2018 season, the last win by Blue Mountain. You know, when we heard that, that's a long time. Yeah, and, and you know, it's a long time for, for a rivalry like this as well. The, these teams, uh, you know, you say it all the time, but these teams do not like each other. They want to beat each other every single time. And Pottsville has had some really great teams, as has Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain's just come up short, uh, you know, at, at most of the, the most recent uh, outcomes of these games. So Jake Wartell in his third year, Pottsville has won 20 Schuylkill League championships. They won it last year as well, 52-38 against Jim Thorpe. And when you look at the Schuylkill League right now and what they've been doing, you know, uh, and we'll look at the standings at halftime, but interesting, a team like Jim Thorpe, who was the championship last year, lost their big guy, start, started out uh, with a bunch of losses, but now another team in the mix. That all being said, Ben, 
different with playoffs this year as they go from four to six teams. Yeah, for the longest time it was just four teams, and you knew Blue Mountain and Pottsville were going to be in there. And then a lot of the times it was Blue Mountain versus Pottsville for the championship. I think opening it up here is really beneficial, especially for this year, because it's not just Pottsville and Blue Mountain. There's a lot of talent in the Schuylkill uh, County this year. Yeah, they'll take three teams from Division One, then the Division Two and Division Three winners, and then the next best team from Division Two and Division Three. Those playoffs, the quarterfinals are set for February the 11th. Semis, 14th and 15th, and the finals at March Hall set for the 17th. So still uh, you know, a ways to go, about a month out from that. But you know it as a basketball coach, that comes really fast. Yeah, and, and that's why each one of these games is so important because when we look at these standings, there's not going to be that many games. But in the next two, three weeks here, that's where a lot of this is going to start to play out. And when you look at that uh, Division One, there's a lot of talent in there to only get three teams going into that playoffs. It's going to be really, really competitive. And, and right now, this is a huge one uh, for that race. Yeah, this is for first place. And obviously the, tonight, the top four teams are actually facing off against each other. Possible against Blue Mountain and North Schuylkill and Jim Thorpe. Um, so those four teams, depending on what happens, again, Jim Thorpe sitting there at 2-2 two and two versus 4-1 uh, you know, and one North Schuylkill, 4-1 and one Blue Mountain, and a 4-0 and oh Pottsville. So it becomes interesting to see where these guys are going to be, or the teams are going to be, before it's all said and done, um, you know, come the end of the month and the beginning of February as we get ready. Right now we get ready for this matchup. We'll get to keys and we'll also get to starting lineups in just a second as I believe they will have a special celebration here before. And when they do, we'll go to the PA announcer. Blue Mountain at 4-1, and 9-3. Again, started 9-0 and oh, their last three games. They lost 82-71 to 71 to 6A Governor Mifflin, 53-42 to Jim Thorpe, and Elko, 48-45. Right now, we go to the PA announcer.
ceremony for today. Let's have one more round of applause for the brave and selfless members. Nice ceremony there before, always great to honor uh, those serving in the military and uh, you know, a great tribute to them as well. And it's also official uh, week, you know, be nice to your officials. You be nice to your officials all the time, right? Always, you know, you always got to be nice to the officials. You know, sometimes you get caught up in the heat of the moment. Hopefully we can remember that. Exactly. Let's take a look at our keys to the game as we get ready for the Schuylkill League matchup. Uh, so Pottsville wants to play hard for all four quarters. They, they've been saying that they've been playing better as of late, um, and it's interesting that both of them want to take care of the basketball. Both these teams are known for their pressure, man-to-man -man defense, and, and I expect that to be one of the main keys tonight. Who can deal with that the most? Who can take care of the basketball and get the best shots? Uh, for Blue Mountain, uh, they know that uh, Pottsville, with the lack of size, like to, to spread them out a little bit, and so they're going to have to make sure that they keep them out of the paint, and I know that uh, Pottsville prides themselves on getting paint touches, getting two feet in the paint as many times as they can. Blue Mountain's going to try and keep them out of that paint. You know, as they bring the starting lineups out, and, uh, you know, we're going to see these, you know, the crowd, uh, it's, it's always in a rivalry like this, you get, and again, we, we know how it is, you get everyone involved. You get the fans involved, the student body involved. You know, they love being a part of this. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Latrell Montone uh, making his way onto the course. Let's take a look at our starting five for both teams as we'll bring them on in. Ryan Matlock, a six-foot senior. Latrell Montone, TJ Allen, Amari Bainbridge, and Nick Chavinsky. And for Blue Mountain, they will go with Brogan Campbell, Carson Kerstetter, Tyler Miller, Matt Colefield, and Isaac Thomas standing in at 6'5". You can see the size differential there. Obviously, they're going to want to get that ball inside to Isaac Thomas. Yeah, and, and Blue Mountain has got three guys that can score in the double digits. Uh, they got to make sure that they can set their tone and, and get the pace there. They want to get up and down. They want this game to be somewhere in the 50s, 60s. 60s. Pottsville wants to keep that game 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, and uh, that's going to be a key paddle to watch here. St. Luke's is the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's sports medicine to provide extraordinary care. The world of name, image, and likeness can be complicated, and the high school and college athletes of the Lehigh Valley need guidance 
to navigate the complexities of endorsements and sponsorships. The sports law attorneys at Gross McGinley are dedicated to educating and assisting the area local athletes on the ins and outs of the NIL. Call 610-820-8450 or visit grossmcginley.com for more information. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream. Get close to the action as we take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or myself or Dave at d11sports.com. Ryan Cofield started with us a couple years back, still doing some stuff with us as well. And we are underway. Rivalry. Here it goes. First place on the nine, on the line. North Schoolkill, by the way, and Jim Thorpe also playing tonight. If we get a report on those scores, we'll pass that along as well. So glad you could join us. And Blue Mountain going from left to right and going right inside. Yeah, it's tough to believe, Val, this is a Monday night because uh, <laughs> sounds more like a Friday night here. Well, I put it on Twitter, I put Monday night, and I put in parentheses, you know, basketball. It is. This will get you ready for the national championship. Straight in the lane and the basket by Brogan Campbell. And early on, uh, the Eagles setting the tone here. They, they really want to make sure that they can drive and drive early and not, and not let uh, Pottsville's defense dictate the pace of this game. So early on, get into the bucket early for uh, two drives, a foul, and a score there. That's big for them. Matt Locke with the basketball. And they want to utilize a bunch of their players here for Pottsville. You mentioned it. It can't be in the 30s to win this game tonight. On the kick out, thought about it. Driving through that one. Off the mark, won't go by Chavinsky. Here's Campbell. Campbell wide open up top, but I think he had the extra step he did. Yeah, he slid his feet off, off the crossover there, but you can see that they're trying to get into their offense early and, and really make sure that Pottsville's pressure does not dictate the game. And now on the other end, they're going to pick up full court to try to speed Pottsville up a little bit here. It is loud in here. Already. You can see how Are they cheering for you? I don't think so. <laughs> but already, you can see how intense the defense is. I mean, it's physical right from the start. The refs are going to have a tough job tonight dealing with the emotions of this game and how physical both teams are going to play. They get the ball in to Matlock. Splitting through the defense. No basket by Amari Bainbridge, but a whistle and a foul. So he had a great crossover to, uh, to start that move, but he's got to finish that off. I think he was a little bit more excited about the, the move than it was the finish. Looking to inbound. They'll get into Matlock. Matlock thought about it, and they'll reassess here on the offense. About a minute 30 in, only basket by Brogan Campbell. We got four fouls already. I, I think the officiating crew is doing a good job of making sure that they dictate how this game is going to be played because it is usually a physical game, especially both ways that they play this pressure man-to-man -man defense. Nice drive inside. That one knocked away. It's getting physical here early on. <laughs> Lost the handle, still on his feet. Rowing through on the kick, kick out to Karstetter. Wide open three. Cofield doesn't take that one. Uh, tenacious defense. Yeah. You know, so, so you, you've been a part of these games because, you know, Blue Mountain, Southern Lehigh, Pottsville, always in the same, uh, you know, classification. Uh, so you know what this is all about. Yeah, I mean, we would come up here or to Parks Hall all the time for district playoffs, and it's just a different type of intensity. And, and I think whichever team deals with it best to start here is, is going to be able to, to set the tone early on. And I think the Blue Eagles just need to settle down on offense 
in dealing with the pressure that Pottsville has. They seem a little bit too fast, um, you know, and I think if they let their offense run, they're going to be able to get some shots. Hard to believe we're only a couple minutes in. It's still 2-0, but there's been a lot of action nonstop, back and forth, a couple turnovers. Feet inside, that one goes off the hands of Isaac Thomas. Yeah, very intense, 2-0. I want to thank Doug Morgan, the athletic director here, for having us here on the baseline. So I asked you this before. Do you like being on the baseline because you feel like you're coaching again? Or do you like being up top when you're doing these games? Uh, I think I, you feel a little bit more into it when you're down here on, on the sideline. Uh, you get to see a little bit better from up top. But I, I think I kind of, after the past couple games, I think I like being down here. <laughs> I feel like they're going to put me in. <laughs> Three. Won't go. And a follow, that does. So Matlock has his first two after the miss by Bainbridge. Yeah, and there's his energy. He's constantly going to be looking to go get the ball. And, you know, Pottsville was worried about second chance points. The other way. So right now, if you're looking at already five fouls here in the first three minutes. Yeah, and that, I mean, these teams are going to have to settle down and figure out how to play foul free for a little bit longer because otherwise this is just going to end up into a foul shooting contest. And Cofield goes to the bench with two fouls here early on. So we won't see him for a while. Found a little seam and nice move to the basket. Can't connect though is Bainbridge. Or excuse me, that was Montone. How about that little change of direction for Campbell? He's got four. And both off the same move, drives to the middle. But you know, if you're the Blue Eagles, you gotta be careful. He was worried about dribble penetration. Pottsville has been able to get dribble penetration, has been able to get two feet into the paint. Bumped off the ball was Matlock. Spinning, assessing, and going to the free throw line is Carson Kerstetter. And you can see why Kirk Setter has, you know, is averaging 17.9 points a game. This is a great move here under control. Spin into an up and under. It's a great move. And those are the types of strong moves that they're going to need uh, with this kind of defense and this kind of intensity. So Kerstetter at the line at 77%. He's been there 94 times already this year. He's on the scoreboard. He's averaging almost 18 points a game and six rebounds. Talk to coach. and You know, you look at a player, he says, the way he goes, we go. Yeah, and, and if he's able to get into a rhythm, get into the bucket, he can knock down foul shots with regularity. And, and that's his game. He really likes to get to the bucket. So as this game goes on... If he's able to continue to do that, that's going to be helpful against this pressure man-to-man -man defense. So 6-2. I tell you what, it's going to be a long first half. Yes, it's going to be a lot of trips to the foul line right now. It's already four fouls. It's going to be a long first quarter. Yeah, it might be a long game. I don't know if either team's going to back down. They might use everybody from the bench. I was going to say, the bench may become a factor. Yeah. I know it's early yeah. and we're talking about it, but, boy, already eight fouls. Wide open look at a three. That one's short. And the follow is good by Kerstetter. And after, you know, a pretty big flurry here, it looks like both teams are settling in a little bit. 8-2 your score. Timeout brought to you by DM2 Security, who's a locally owned and operated security company, presently serving most all of Pennsylvania. They did provide all phases of security services for your home and business. They offer free estimates and have very competitive pricing and superior customer service. Let DM2 Security start protecting you today. Check them out at www.dm2security.com. It's a small price to pay for your peace of mind. Glad you could join us here on this Monday night high school basketball action. Two of the top teams in Division One Again, the playoffs change this year for the first time. You get three teams from Division One, the top three. 
one uh, champ from Division Two, the one from Division Three, and then the next best team uh, in the mix as well from Division Two and Division Three. Everyone's expanding their playoffs. Yeah, and I think, you know, you never know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think especially this year for the Schuylkill League, I think it's going to be a great thing. Up top on a three. Much needed there by Latrell Montone as he connects with his fifth three-pointer of the year. And I've been impressed with him right from the start. He's a sophomore point guard, and I wasn't sure how he was going to be able to handle this pressure. Um, but, you know, they play some pretty big games early in the season, and that, that prepared him for, for tonight. Not a foul you want to have there as they'll get this one on T.J. Allen. Chase Oswald will check into the game. And Ben, we realize, you said it's a Monday night, we realize it's early part of January, right? Yes. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if it's Pottsville Blue Mountain, it's going to be packed no matter when it is. I don't know if that ball was tipped or not. It was. Yeah, I do think he tipped it. So nine team fouls. Combined here. Five to the tide, four to the Eagles. Under three to play opening quarter. Waiting, assessing, but can't put it through was Bainbridge. And the rebound, Isaac Thomas is averaging 12 rebounds. He also has 32 block shots on a year. Those are some good numbers. Yeah. And Coach Ward talked about that he looks the part. Uh, bad decision there. Yeah, bad decision coming across. Goes for the block and instead going to the free throw line is going to be Bainbridge. Bainbridge read that the whole time. He saw that that pass was coming across, and good vision. Take a look. Yeah, he baited him into it, uh, and he was able to steal this pass. You know, but what's impressive is that uh, Thomas was able to sprint back and, and at least contest that. Yeah, he fouled him, but he's going to make it and earn it at the line. 60% from the free throw line, 12 of 20 for Bainbridge. Averages five points a game, nine threes, and three rebounds a game. This is on the first. Second one, no good. Push that one out, and it goes to Tyler Miller. And, and those are the kind of fouls that, that are getting frustrating for both coaches. I mean, that's a foul 80 feet from the basket, and now they're just getting that much closer to one and one. This could be the quickest time we've ever been in a one and one. <laughs> and need some help getting it in. They do. Now they got to get across. Kerstetter gets the offense going here. 8-5 your score. The Mountain jumped out to an 8-2 lead. So they call a penalty. Uh, Thomas. Me, a pen yeah, they got him there away from the ball. Yeah, they were uh, trying to isolate him, and Pottsville did a good job fronting the post and having backside help, and they just called him on a push-off when he tried to release for the ball, and that's now two on him. All right, so, Ben, you're coaching this game. At what point do you settle these guys down? I don't – I mean, for me, now, but I don't know if these guys know can do it. <laughs> I mean, I think this is their style, and, and they're comfortable, you know, in these waters, and those guys on the, on the bench are ready to step up and jump right into the same style. Got too far underneath the basket, and then the frustration foul by Tyler Schapel. Say we're in one and one already here. Yeah, we're walking the floor at 150. Normally we're doing that 150 in the second quarter. What's that? Normally we're doing that in the second quarter at 150. Right, yeah, right about here. You know. So to the free throw line is Campbell. Campbell at 51%, 40 of 78. He averages 12 points a game, 13 threes, and 3.6. Rebounds a game. The Mountain looking for their first points is about the 330 mark. Yeah. 
Makes the first, he's got five. And the second one is good. With everything so heavily contested, every point is going to matter in this game. And, and you know, if we're going to have this many foul shots, teams, both teams are going to be able to have to knock them down and take advantage of the easy opportunities they get. Fast breaks, uh, you know, mis miscommunications on defense. I was just going to answer that question. The pace right now, is it favoring Pottsville? I, I think it's actually favoring Blue Mountain. They want to get up and down, but right now Pottsville is doing a better job here of being able to take their time and it's you know they got another paint touch and, a, and another shot 10 feet from the basket that that's what they want after they took about a minute off the clock yep. that's, that's kind of what they want shot will not drop for Kurt Stetter and it remain Blue Mountain basketball here with 105 on the clock so to answer your question I'm not sure <laughs> They're in traffic. Kerstetter. Now they got numbers coming the other way. On the kick out. Wide open look at a three. That one does not go for Montone. Will come the other way. Kerstetter gave that one up. And then fresh off the bench. First shot by Ryan Grace. He can't connect on the three. Inside 40 seconds. Wow, a little hook coming across and scoring is Chase Oswald. Cuts the lead to 10-7. Excuse me, that was Ryan Matlock on the basket. Yeah, Matlock had a nice left-to-right crossover. He's, again, never going to stop attacking, and they're trying to get dribble penetration. Four seconds on the clock. This counts if it goes, and it will not. And they'll send this one a distance. That one doesn't go through one. Intensity is high. 10-7 Blue Mountain. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. St. Luke's knows that trust is the foundation of all relationships. It's earned over time. It's the type of relationship you should have with your healthcare team. While our healthcare needs are different, one thing is constant. St. Luke's is focused on building a lasting relationship with you, earning your trust and putting your well being first. When it comes to great health care, trust is essential. St. Luke's, the care you trust, now more than ever. We are back 10-7 in favor of the Eagles. Six for Campbell, four for Kerstetter, four for Matlock, three for Montone. Your thoughts on the first quarter? You know, it's what I expected, very, very highly intense on the defensive end, it's, a, it's a gonna be a matter of who can find any sort of flow offensively. But as of right now, really neither team can. Pottsville's been able to get to the paint, and, and I think what's gonna be huge is, is if Montone can continue to get in there and finish. And on the other end for the Blue Eagles, they, they've scored a little bit, um, but Kirksetter seems to be the most composed out there and is able to get to the basket. Well, right into the second quarter, and Timeout. I mean, excuse me, a foul. Back to one on one. Sure. So, you know, obviously the foul line's going to play out, but I think the three point line is going to play out, too, because as points as are, are a premium here, if someone can knock down a three, it just feels like it's a 10 point shot yeah. as opposed to just a three point shot. And I, I think for the Blue Eagles, 33, Ryan Grace coming in to stretch the court a little bit uh, is going to be helpful for them. And, and that one by Montone earlier on in the first quarter was big. So three for three from the free throw line for Brogan Campbell.
Now 12-7, up by five. Well, the crowd settled in. It's a wide open look. Connect here would be huge, and he does. That's Bainbridge, his 10th three-pointer of the year. Blue Mountain trying to answer, and answering inside is Campbell who's lighting it up. So a big hit by Brainbridge on one end of the floor, but Campbell's been able to get to the middle of the floor. I mean, his drives haven't even been on the right or left. He's been getting to the middle, and Pottsville's going to start having to push him to the outside. 14 to 10. Just a minute into quarter number two, so we're glad you could join us here on D11sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Speaking of rivalries, there's one coming up on Friday night in D11 Sports. That's Liberty and Freedom. Yeah, that's a rivalry, I would say. Just a tad. And both teams are good this year. I, I mean, it's been a while since both of them have been good. It should be a great matchup. They've done a great job on Thomas so far, who's, who's not scored yet. He averages 14 points on the game. Yeah, Pottsville's starting to get into a flow offensively. That last possession is kind of what they want. They want to take their time, dribble, drive, kick, dribble, drive, kick. And on the other end, they're swarming Thomas. They're fronting him in the post, and they have weak side help. They're leaving um, Blue Mountain shooters to help on him, and they're going to try and make uh, Blue Mountain beat them uh, or let somebody else beat them. Blue Mountain with a couple players with two fouls. Getting around the defense was Isaac Thomas. We just talked about him. He must be hearing us from here. Yeah, and that his first touch that he got, his first clean touch, was off of a baseline out of bounds play. So, you know, if they can, they got to be able to figure out some creative ways to be able to get him the ball with the way that Pottsville's playing him. Matches the biggest lead at six. It was 8-2 in the early going. Seen a lot of like hook shots and baby hooks going in there. That one doesn't go for Matt Locke. It will come the other way. Yeah, I'd like to see Pottsville, you know, come to a stop when they get into the paint. If they can come to a stop, they'll be able to find somebody, you know, find cutters, get better shots, not not so many wild ones. One on two. That ball maybe didn't get deflected, but seeing size coming here really altered it. Yep, Thomas affected that one. It's getting another wild shot at their, at you know, off their dribble penetration. Yeah, you know when you have those big guys, sometimes they don't have all the block shots, but they'll alter a shot. That's not altered. That's Karstetter. Carson Karstetter. So Karstetter with the basket. Makes it 18-10. Time out on the floor. DM2 Security is locally owned and operated security company, presently serving most all of Pennsylvania. They provide all phases of security services for your home and business. They offer free estimates and have very competitive pricing and superior customer service. Let DM2 Security start protecting you today. Check them out on the web at www.dm2security.com. It's a small price to pay for your peace of mind. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream. Get close to the action as you take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or myself or Dave at d11sports.com. So what Blue Mountain's able to do here, we just talked about how they were able to limit Thomas's touches. They kind of pulled Thomas out there and then instead put Kirksetter in the post so they can switch guys to be able to take advantage of their size. So biggest lead at eight. And still five and change left in quarter number two. It does seem to have calmed down a little bit, though. Just a little. Just a little. I haven't seen a foul in about a minute and 10 seconds. <laughs> that one's stolen away. And straight to the glass. And the scoring is Thomas. Yeah, when you look at him, his size, six foot five, he can jump, he can run, he can really move for his size. Yeah, Ben, I was just going to say that. When he got up, I yeah. mean, he made it look so flawless. Yeah, and then just seamlessly into the, the dribble drive for the, for the finish. Right through the lane, and that one gets knocked away. 33rd block shot, they'll get it back. I mean, and that was a special one. He went up and knocked it off the glass. 
Rainbow three doesn't go. Rebound doesn't go. The rebound off to Thomas. Blue Mountain hearing it from the crowd, and the ball loose. Could be a walk here or a foul. Uh, that's a third. That's a tough foul. He's going to have to sit down probably till the, till the second half. And we talked to Coach before the game. He talked about how impressed he was with Thomas and all the different things that he could do. Uh, you know, but there are these small things, you know, where he's going to sometimes turn the ball over, as we saw earlier. Little things like that are youthful mistakes that he's going to be able to correct as we go through the season. How, how you said maybe sit out the rest of the quarter. I mean, he's got three fouls. Would you, you would start him and start the second, the third quarter, or would you sit him there too? Depending on what the score is, right? I think it depends on the score, and I, I still think it depends on the game. I mean, he, if he's able to play it maybe a different way and understand that he can't pick up another one early on, it's going to have to be a conversation probably at halftime as to whether or not they're going to go with him right away. Two free throws by Montone. It's 20-12. to 12. And with him being out too, now it takes away that inside outside with him and Kirksetter being able to go high low. You know, now they just have Kirksetter uh, as their post. And the extra step by Campbell. As we approach the midway point of the first half. Well, that's been open all night. Now it's different because it's open, but there's not a big guy standing in front of you, and Montone will score a seventh point to close the gap. Yeah, huge difference when you don't have someone in there altering your shots. Talked earlier about some of the wild finishes that they were trying. So the miss by Campbell is a big possession. As I say that, the turnover here for the Crimson Tide. Oh, that was a move. Hang time for Campbell. Campbell made the easy one harder than it should have been and then made the hard one look easy. Back up by eight. Thinking about it. Driving through. Everything but the basket, however, for Bainbridge. But you can sense Pottsville feels way more confident being able to go to the bucket and finish around the rim without Thomas in there. Good look at a three. That one hits the back of the rim. Doesn't go by Grace. They get the rebound and pop it back out by Aiden Grace. Uh, I do think Grace is going to have a huge play in this game. If he can knock down one or two threes, that's going to be a big backbreaker. Well, instead he goes interior off the window. Back up 10. Approaching the two-minute mark. Four on two. Bounce pass across. And they will get an offensive foul here on Campbell. With 2.06 on the clock. How many does he have? Let's take a look at this. You know, there's turnovers here again, and they should be able to capitalize off this. He's going to the bucket. He slid over there, and he was under. It's just, you know, it's one of those cylinder things, you know. If that was that arc under there, I don't know if that would have been a charge. That was the first foul against Kerr okay. Setter. Again, remember we were talking about in the first quarter with two minutes and they were ready to go to the line or going to the line? We're still sitting here at eight fouls apiece, so it has settled it has down. down a little bit, yeah. And maybe that's something the two coaches talked about, you know, that it was going to be a, a nightmare if they kept going that same rate. Hotswell really moving the ball. They are now now on this end with Pottsville. I think it's going to be Shavinsky. If he's able to get free to knock down a three, uh, that's going to be big for them. Here's a look at a three. That one doesn't go by Montone. And timeout on the floor. 
DM2 Security is a locally owned and operated security company presently serving most all of Pennsylvania. They provide all phases of security services for your home and business. They offer free estimates and have very competitive pricing and superior customer service. Let DM2 Security start protecting you today. Check them out on the web at www.dm2security.com. It's a small price to pay for your peace of mind. 24-14 years score. The world of name, image, and likeness can be complicated, and the high school and college athletes of the Lehigh Valley need guidance to navigate the complexities of endorsements and sponsorships. The sports law attorneys at Gross McGinley are dedicated to educating and assisting the area's local athletes on the ins and outs of the NIL. Call 610-820-5450 or visit grossmcginley.com for more information. An interesting 122 or 23 left here. Yeah, it's a big spot in the game. You know, go up, continue double digits, or close down to single digits for Pottsville. This is an interesting possession here for Blue Mountain. So they'll get an offensive foul on Ryan Grace. I think it was an extra push off on the elbow. Or was it? It was an illegal screen on third. Oh, is that what it was? An illegal screen on 13. This first, team 24-14. <laughs> and we'll walk the floor. That one knocked away. I wasn't going to make the play on that one. Because if I picked up the ball, I was probably going to shoot it from here and yeah. make it. Yeah, and you don't want anybody to see you know, no, what kind of talent you have. The talent level is yeah. extreme. Yeah. <laughs> we just talked about not too many fouls. There's three called in five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that was at the 123 mark, by the way. <laughs> Unbelievable. So to the line again, at 75% Montone, 18 of 24 coming in. Last year, Pottsville beat Jim Thorpe 52-38 to win the Schuylkill League Championship. They have won the Schuylkill League Championship six of the eight years and 20 overall for them. Jake Wartala, a four-year starter, 1,000-point scorer, part of that 2004 championship team. Cut the lead back to eight. A minute on the clock. Patience here for the Eagles. Pottsville's doing a better job now, keeping their hands off and being in passing lanes. Kerstetter clears traffic and just pops home a 15-footer. Good poise by him. They're going to look to go to him when they're uh, being pressured. So 16 seconds on the clock. Feed that goes off. And lost a footing, maybe off as a foul. Oh, thought it was going to be an offensive, uh, excuse me, I thought it was going to be a walk, a traveling call. But, but I believe it called an offensive foul, correct? Yeah, it called an offensive foul. I think he was, it. I think what sold it kind of was he got hit in the face as he was going through, and I think that, that kind of sold the call. That's two fouls on Kerstetter. He's got to be careful not to pick one up here. Yeah, Coach Work took him out to his yeah, yeah. third. Maybe a good point. Ten-point game, 26-16, six seconds left. Try to air one up here if he can. He'll throw one up, and that will be no good. It's 26-16 at the half in favor of Blue Mountain. Ryan. Ryan. Watch the 
All right, Ryan Cofield waiting for Coach to pop in. There's a lot of communication and crowd going here. Go ahead. Good first half here, Coach. What worked well there in the first half? I, thought, I mean, we held them to 16 points, so obviously our defense was doing pretty well. Um, got a little loose when Isaac went, got in foul trouble and had to go to the bench. We gave up some, some points in the paint, um, we got, so we got to clean that up. Young guys stepping off off the bench, lots of guys in foul trouble. What are we going to do here in the second half to try and take care of those guys who are in foul trouble and try and get these young guys in the game as well? You know, uh, I, I trust those young kids. You know, I, I've, I've got full faith in them when they get in the game, and uh, we just need to take care of the ball the second half, and we'll be all right. Well, good first half, Coach. Good luck in the second. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot. A 10-point game, 26-16. to 16. We'll take a break, be back with more action. You're watching on D11sports.com, Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. I believe that St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. Hopefully they, they come to us and, and they leave and there's not another need to be filled. Your daughter or son's team can come to us and we provide it all. On the ground, go! The team atmosphere and the, the team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. There's not another orthopedic group, sports medicine group, healthcare system in the country that has high level degree certified, years of experience. Bench hit thrust or floor, we know what block A is, and then let me get another group of seven. Certified athletic trainers and the performance coaches are assigned to schools and they are there and they are getting the teams and doing team training around sports schedules and, and, and the student activity schedules. That's primarily where it's done. We also have to provide uh, training here like at this facility, we provide a comprehensive training program that is the most up-to-date training advancements. It's the safest it can be. We got our A walks. Remember, good. It's not about gimmicks. Our, our guys are all educated and have the science behind what they're doing, a rhyme or reason of what they're doing, and we have leadership that will make sure that. We're going to provide the best service there is. We actually care about your kids. Focusing on getting my butt back and my chest up. People don't know how to use this stuff. And so you, you need someone to teach them and to help them navigate it in a way that's going to be productive. It's not going to hurt them. They trust me to put together a workout and they're always asking questions about it, which is great. You know, I wanted them to have that trust that, you know, I'm going to help them succeed on and off the court. Every coach, every parent, they, they want what's best for their student. Okay? They want what's going to help them be the best version of themselves. And so that's what we can provide. I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. We are at the half. 26-16, a 10-point game in favor of Blue Mountain. Take you through the scoring here. Matt Lockwood, four. Nine points for Montone. Three points for Amari Bainbridge. On the other side, 12 points for Campbell. Six in the first, six in the second. Eight points for Kerstetter. Two points for Ryan Grace off the bench. Isaac Thomas with four. And before we get to the standings, obviously the foul situation. you got a couple guys with two, a couple guys with three fouls already in this game. Yeah, and... It's going to, obviously we talked about it, and both teams can't afford to continue to play like that and, and expect to come out on top. So they're going to have to play a little bit smarter because for each team they have guys that can control the game in different ways. Like for Blue Mountain, Campbell came out and, and attacked early and was able to get them going. Kirk Setter uh, held them together when uh, Thomas had to go to the bench. And when Thomas was in there, that spurt of plays there, he really affected the game. And then on the other end, you, you know, you got Montone, Bainbridge, and Matlock able to really make plays going to the basket. And all those guys got to make sure they stay out of foul trouble. Interesting, Ben, with this game, uh, you know, it, they're always physical when it comes to the Schuylkill League and, you know, and, and you play. Um, tonight's game, we have a couple of officials from up north outside of District 11. Um, and those calls maybe that they're not used to getting, 
maybe are surprising these coaches as well because it's so physically played. And tonight, you know, there's a lot of calls being made. Yeah, and I actually think the game has been officiated well. I, 100%. I, I, yeah, I think it's been being officiated well. It's just not kind of maybe the what they're used to as far as things go. Um, you know, and but in the second quarter there, they settled down and, and understood for a little bit. And, and there's a lot of, like, college coaches that, you know, at the four-minute mark, they'll call timeout and talk to their players about how the game is being officiated so that they can change things. And hopefully that's what both these teams are seeing now. Let's pop in the standings. This is going into tonight. And, again, if I get some scores here, I'll share them with you. But you can see, again, it's going to be three teams from uh, Division One, the uh, Division Two champ, Division Three champ, and then one other the top teams in that Division Two and Division Three to get in. Uh, so right now, if it was tonight, it would be Pottsville, Blue Mountain, or Schuylkill getting in. Schuylkill Haven, Marion, and then the next best team there would be Mahanoy area. Again, all this can change. It can change by the end of the night as well. But it's going to be an interesting tournament, as we mentioned, it, that it goes to six teams. Yeah, and, and it, as, like I said, as you look at Division One, there, there's a ton of talent there. I mean, Jim Thorpe is really coming on strong. Tamak would just beat, or beat Jim Thorpe earlier in the season so there's a lot of talent there uh you know panther valley is, is expected to have a good year this year as well so i think that's going to fluctuate a lot as we move through the year and then division two and division three also has a lot of uh competitiveness uh within each one of their divisions as well now jake martell in his third year they're coming off a championship win 52 38 in the school league championship a year ago so all eyes on them even with some players that have left and dustin Wharton is 20th year their last championship, I believe, was 2017. We'll take a break, come back, and get ready to start the second half of play. You're watching our D11Sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. Do you suffer from nagging neck or back pain? The St. Luke's Comprehensive Spine Program can get you better, faster. We're easy to access and don't require a referral. We'll call you, discuss your symptoms, and put you on a path to healing with the most appropriate provider. Call 1-866-ST-LUKES, option 6, or fill out the online form. Interested in a medical career? Consider St. Luke's if you want to be a doctor or a nurse. Based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we are the area's only four-year medical school and the largest provider of medical residencies and fellowships, and the country's longest-running school of nursing. Train at an organization that is nationally recognized in education, patient care, and quality. See why we are ranked the nation's number one teaching hospital. Where you train matters. The best doctors and nurses train at the best hospitals. St. Luke's University Health network we are back 26 16 to score here the other two teams playing tonight you know, one of our student reporters covering it luke stevanoski and really scoring in that one not sure if they're at the half yet but north kuka leading by a score of 37 to 10 so that's an interesting score as well st luke's is a region's largest sports medicine provider covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, we trust St. Luke's Sports Medicine to provide extraordinary care. The world of name, image, and likeness can be complicated, and the high school and college athletes of the Lehigh Valley need guidance to navigate the complexities of endorsements and sponsorships. The sports law authorities at Gross McGinley are dedicated to educating and assisting the area's local athletes on the ins and outs of the NIL. Call 610-820-5450 or visit grossmcginley.com for more information. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream and get close to the action as you take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or myself or Dave at d11sports.com. Ryan Cofield's in the house tonight. Um, he's in his second year at Villanova. He actually had a chance to broadcast the Schuylkill League Championships with us, uh, for us last year as well. His mom, who's an official as well, she did the girls' championship, so all in the family uh, with that. And, uh, you know, Ben, we love seeing our students uh, continue to do it and learning each uh, more and more each and every day. They're on the court. Yeah, and I think it's getting better each year with the 11 sports just to see kind of that, that web extend and, and see them uh, go all different places and be so successful. And I think it all starts with them getting the chance at D11 Sports to be able to to start that early on and have some confidence going into that, that career at or that 
that field in college. All right, so we get ready to start the third quarter. Take me into both locker rooms uh, as we get underway. Start with Pottsville. I, I think with Pottsville, it's about making sure that they take advantage of the chances that they get. So, you know, with Thomas here, he's starting this game. So I think if they said he wasn't going to be in there, they're going to go to the bucket because he's not in there. I think they're still going to go to the bucket to try to get him to get his fourth or fifth foul to try to get him out of there and make their offense a little bit easier. And for uh, Blue Mountain, it's about taking care of the basketball. Uh, they're going to get more pressure, and they can't be tentative. They have to make smart decisions with the pressure that they see. Well, we'll see what happens here and see how the second half of play is called. And as they say that, quickly a foul. And that one, I believe, is on Matt Cofield. He, he had missed the majority of the first half. He's got three he's now. He's got three. Yep. So he's got to be really careful here. So Blue Mountain on the defensive end trying to keep their lead. That's going to be all offensive as Riley Matlock just came in and really used that forearm to push forward. Yeah, that's the third offensive foul we call. Maybe it's the fourth one we've seen. I mean, that was definitely one. He had his arm up and shoved him out of the way. And, again, they have to – I know it's – early in the third quarter here. They got to know how this is going to be officiated. They just had a whole half of it. Yeah, right. We, we got, what, 20 seconds in, already have two fouls. Yeah. Maybe nothing will change. I want to thank Doug Morgan, the athletic director here at Blue Mountain, for his hospitality. Us down on the floor right now. Great crowd on hand. Seeing what these two teams have here tonight. I think Blue Mountain had a nice little set there. They ran the flex offense, were able to get it inside the Thomas. He found a, uh, a, a good post-to-post -post pass there. It just fell out of bounds. And Ben, this year a little bit different. I believe this is the first year. I, again, I, get, I, I always get confused when I go from football season to basketball season. That boat, nice feed underneath, but can't convert. It's Travinsky. We'll come the other way. I'll get back to my thought in a second. As Blue Mountain is now on the offensive side of things. Back in is number 44. Nice backdoor cut. Nice feed across. And that's Campbell. So we got another offensive foul wow. now here on Campbell. I don't know if I've seen that many uh, offensive fouls. You said it before, three or four. Yeah, we're moving up the chart here. Yeah. That's two on Campbell. And the roll for Montone. And I think what both teams, both teams love getting to the basket. And I think they, they can't let the, the, the amount of offensive fouls being called deter them from going to the basket because that's, that's what their game is. They're just going to have to maybe slow down as they get to the basket and go off of two feet as opposed to one. Jake Wartella was told to get back in that coaching box. I mean, they were tight on that as well. Way outside three. No. Rebound underneath. Second chance on the kick out. And off the window, some way, somehow, Kerstetter gets it. He's and, got 10. And I've been so impressed with him, not even just his scoring, his ability to calm everybody down. He's the one guy out there for both teams that seems to have the poise right now in, in the way that this game's being played. Another turnover here for Pottsville. And Tyler Miller, that's the, the third play now here in the second half that he's made defensively. He's someone that doesn't pop out on the stat sheet, but Coach talked about his defense and his athleticism, and he is having an effect uh, on the game on that end of the floor. Yeah, I had a thought earlier, and now I don't have it anymore because I forgot. Something about it'll the, come, it'll the, come back. The football season into the basketball season. Yeah, that helps. What, what does that mean? I don't, I don't remember. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. I'll figure it out. That was an extra, well, I think it was steps. Nope, foul. No, I think he got stepped on. He got tripped maybe. Mm. I'm really trying to think about what I was going to ask. That's why i got to keep going with the flow. You're going to have to have another page of notes over yeah. there for Al's thoughts. Al's thoughts after he forgets them. <laughs> Baseline jumper. Kerstetter. 
So Kerstetter with back to back. He's got ten, uh, 12. Is the biggest lead of the game, now 12. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. And I'll tell you right after this shot. So the basket's good by Matlock. For years, both of these teams have been in the 5A classification with the likes of Southern Lehigh and Whitehall and everything else. I'm not mistaken, this is the first year they're both 4A class. Yes, since it went to six, I'm pretty sure that's the first year that they've both been there. I don't know if one or the other has been, but yes, this is the first year that they're 4A. Yeah, and that becomes interesting because everyone in that 5A classification is all new. And uh, Pokemon Mountain West dropped in that 5A class. Yeah, the only, I think maybe the only ones that are still in there are Banger and Southern Lehigh. Um, Yeah, those are the only two that are, are still in there. East Stroudsburg, South and North sometimes flip-flop back and around, but consistently it's always been Blue Mountain, Pottsville, Banger, Southern Lehigh. So that 4A classification really, really is. Yes, exactly. 30 to 20. They send this one out. Pottsville's getting back to now. More of their dribble drive, being patient. So 4.30 remaining in the quarter, uh, third quarter. Didn't see anything inside. Decided to reset the offense. Kirst had a thought about it. You know, we talked... Coach taught us about number 21, and he said, the way he goes, we go. Right now, they're up by 10. You know, he's got himself, you know, 12 points. And he's kind of taking on the role of point forward here. I know he plays as a guard, but, you know, they have Campbell out there as their point guard, but it's really been Kirk Center that's been controlling the game. Off the sideline, I mean, off the side, on the baseline jumper, that one not close to the side of the basket. Come the other way, split through the defense. And this is what you were talking about earlier, you know, knowing that if you're going to get back in there, and sometimes when you know you want to get that block, you don't go for the block. And yeah. that's the fourth foul. Take a look. Yeah, and he, he's coming from a long ways away. And you want to block off the ball, but this is, this is a wild attempt at getting the block. And, and that one you just want to give up. I was going to say previously, Pottsville's been getting to the basket. And I've been su surprised at how many layups they've been missing. And I think that they're going to get on a run if they start finishing those. You know, they've, you've seen him miss that many layups. Maybe you don't go for that block, and now he's going to have to probably come out. I don't well, even know. they didn't give it to him. They oh, gave it to 10 gave on it the body. Early on. Okay, they gave it to him going for the charge on a block. Okay. Got lucky. Yeah. So, Bainbridge, they had put four up there originally, and then they, and I saw it for a second, and it's different. So, Bainbridge, 12 of 20 from the free throw line coming in. Makes one of two. Cuts the lead to nine. And Pottsville continues to be hanging around. Shout out to Tom McGoey, who's the assistant, also the football coach. Also the football coach for Pottsville. I think they just called a carry, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And caught uh, Coach Wirt off, you know, really surprised. <laughs> And these guys are not used to seeing some calls like this. These guys from up north, a little bit different. I still think if Pottsville takes their time, you know, on those layups, they're, they're going to be able to finish them. They're just rushing early on. So they're going to call a walk here on Bainbridge as a battle for that. Good hustle, good intensity. He just, you can't move once you're on the ground. You can't spin over, which is so tough to do. See, if our ankles were allowed to, you know, just rotate all the way, <laughs> there would never be walks called like that. <laughs> but being that they can't do that, or if they do, you're out of the game anyway, a little bit different. Be in a lot of pain. <laughs> So three and change left here in the third. That ball popped away. Back out to Blue Mountain. And they'll reset the offense. Campbell came out storming in the first quarter. Had scored six and then six in the second quarter. He's been held in check here in quarter number three. 
I don't think he's attempting a shot. Again, a foul away from the ball. And we'll see some substitutions coming in here for Pottsville as they will go to the bench. TJ Pot Allen checks out. Yeah, Pottsville's doing a, or a, a good job of trying to continue to not let Thomas get it. They still do the same thing, fronted him and had a, someone behind him. But Blue Mountain's doing a good job of taking their time on the offensive end. Uh, Kerstetter with two more. So Kerstetter has six in the quarter, 14 for the game, and back up to an 11-point lead. It's 32-21. If Pottsville's going to make this a game, they're going to have to go on a run right now because Blue Mountain feels comfortable the way that the game's being played right now or the pace of it. And some of those are going to have to drop from the outside, which we haven't really seen since Montone hit one earlier and Bainbridge. Those two, that's it. Yeah, and that was a real early on. So 2.15 on the clock. Tell you what, I do like the way number 44 plays. Well, as I say that, he may get charged. I don't think they're going to get him, but he, he's really smooth to the basketball. You know, sometimes you don't see big guys that can really dribble, but when you're, you know, when you're a player, you're a player, you're going to see that. Uh, you can make a good basketball player at the collegiate level. Um, yeah, and I, feel, of the year. I feel like coming out here in the second half, he had, he had a different walk about him, a little bit more confidence coming out here in the second half um, after getting his feet under him in that first half. Yeah, he takes a breather, checks out now. Those are good minutes for him to go that long playing without a foul. I mean, there was a couple iffy ones in there. Right. To get that kind of minutes from him without getting a foul is huge going into the the fourth quarter. Yeah, depending on if they put him back in here or keep him out the rest, he's going to go full throttle in the fourth. It'll yeah. be a big difference. But if you're possible, you got to take advantage of him not being in there here yeah, in the next two minutes. The on the reverse, Matlock can't connect. And another missed layup. Kerstetter with the fake. Let me get the roll, and it remains Blue Mountain basketball. Blue Mountain to inbound. And they'll send it across to Tyler Miller. And you keep mentioning number 33, Ryan Grace. If he can get loose on a three. Yeah, I mean, if he would just be able to get that one off now. So Schapel with his third foul. Blue Mountain, keep that one alive. On the kick out. Nice pass. Oh. And that one knocked away. They'll call a foul going up on Montone. He's frustrated. Yeah, it looked like he got it clean up top, but then they just called it with the body down below. Not sure if we can take a look here. I don't know if he went straight up, but this is a good, good find. Maybe Campbell can get back on the, yeah, he got him in the body. Yeah, Campbell was the go-to guy early on, and then he, he haven't called his name for a while. They've kind of been picking him up full court, taking him out of the game. Um, so let's see if we can get him back into it. So Campbell now 5 for 5 from the free throw line. And make it 6 for 6. He's got 14. Biggest lead of the game, 34-21. Driving through. Oh. oh, that was a walk. No one there for a rebound as well. Yeah, and Chafinski's a shooter. He should have shot that as soon as he caught it. He thought about it. Now with this pressure, Blue Mountain's running their flex set a little bit higher. Probably going to try and look for some back doors. Broken. Back door broken. That ball loose. 
They go for the steal, they don't get it. And this one right in front of the Pottsville bench. So Pottsville will get the ball back here with 29 seconds left. And obviously this is a big possession going into the fourth quarter here. It's a 13 point game if they, they gotta be able to cut this uh, to 12 or 10. Yeah, we always talk about it, trying to get within single digits if possible before the end of a quarter, get some momentum going to the bench. Yeah, any kind of score here is gonna give them what they need going into the fourth quarter. I think they should stick with the dribble drive and they just gotta finish. But at the same time, Ben, points have been hard to come by. Here's a long three, and that's monstrous for Nick Chavinsky, his 15th three-pointer of the year. That cuts it to 10, final six seconds. This will count if it goes. It does not ball loose, and that will end the third. So through three, 34-24, Blue Mountain on top of Pots Pottsville. Back after this, you're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week, presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Hall of Fame pitcher Steve Carlton knows what it takes to exceed expectations. He knows what it means to be part of a team that rises above the competition. He knows a champion. Steve Carlton knows St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. 34-24, your score after three. Uh, ben, your thoughts as we welcome everyone back. Uh, you know, it's a 10-point game, but I, I think Pottsville, you know, that's a huge shot by Shavinsky. He, no hesitation there. He, they even set that play up for him, and I think they need that to counterbalance all the dribble drive that they get, and it'll take some of the pres pressure off those guys going to the basket. They just need to finish when they get around the rim, and then if they can add in a three ball or two, it's going to be a game. Now we'll see what happens here in the fourth quarter. Five fouls apiece, if you are wondering. That's the last thing you want to do is have to take a timeout um, to start the fourth quarter. And, and that's kind of going to give us an introduction as to what this fourth quarter is going to be like <laughs> as far as the pressure that Pottsville is going to bring. DM2 Security is locally owned and operated as a security company presently serving most all of Pennsylvania. They provide all phases of security services for your home and business. They offer free estimates and have very competitive pricing and superior customer service. Let DM2 Security start protecting you today. Check them out at the web at www.dm2security.com. It's a small price to pay for your peace of mind. You're interested in looking at the losses for Pottsville. They have four losses. Scored 34 in a loss to Wilson West Lawn. Scored 30 in a loss to Hazleton. Scored 24 in a loss to Williamsport. And scored 35 in a loss to Brooks Catholic. Numbers don't lie. Yeah, and, and you know... Coach Rotella was in the same in the last game. That's how they want to play. They scored 65 against a pretty good Panther Valley team. So it's not like they can't score. It just seems like tonight uh, things aren't falling for them. A lot of pressure here by Pottsville. They're letting them play here. And with that, just lost the ball, the handle. Or was it? Oh, it was hit. Yeah, it, it was hit out by Pottsville. So Kerstetter with 14, Campbell with 14. On the other side, 11 for Montone to lead it away for the Tide. 34-24 just underway, about 30 seconds in. Nice feed underneath. Kerstetter now has 16. Uh, Blue Mountain's execution on their baseline out of bounds has been a big part of this game here. That, that's the easiest basket they've been able to get is on baseline out of bounds. So up by 12. Again, two threes hit earlier by Pottsville. They've had some shots like that that have not fallen all night. I mean, we're talking about maybe four or five extra shots yeah. that could have gone. They have not. And now back down to a 10-point deficit after the basket by Matlock. And the difference there by Matlock, he came to a stop and was in two feet, and he had a controlled look at the basket. And they need to continue to finish that way. Oh, 
A uh, minute 15 into quarter number four. And we get a whistle away from the ball. So Montone, a guy that you can ill afford to lose, now has four fouls. And they're one away from the bonus. And Thomas doing a good job of staying in there. So Blue Mountain from here will get Tamaqua on the road and then Lee Heighton and then at North Schoolkill, their next three before going to Northampton. I believe it's Northampton's on the road. No, they're home with Northampton. For Pottsville, they get North Schoolkill and Jim Thorpe at home and then at Pine Grove. Travel. Coach Bertella. Using that towel, he's starting to sweat on that sideline. He yeah. knows that his team, and you've been saying this the whole time, you connect on back-to-back -back shots. You, before you say, you know, a 10-point lead feels like it's 30 right now, but you cut into the lead and make it six. You know, yeah. at that four-minute mark, it, it's changing. But look at here's Kerstetter on the break. Makes a great move to the basket. Like it how he plays. Yeah, he's been taking advantage of every opportunity that he gets to score, and especially, like you said, 38-26. This is a low-scoring game, so every point is huge. Bainbridge. And if Pottsville can continue to finish at the basket, they're going to be able to make a run. That's it. Six minutes to go, and they're able to prolong games with the pressure that they bring. Thirty-eight twenty-eight. Just about five thirty remaining. And Blue Mountain just not afraid to take their time on that possession. And Campbell will score his sixteenth points of the night, and it's forty to twenty-eight. So back up by twelve at the five twenty-two mark. DM2 Security, locally owned and operated security company, presently serving most all of Pennsylvania. They provide all phases of security services for your home and business. They offer free estimates and have very competitive pricing and superior customer service. Let DM2 Security start protecting you today. Check them out on the web at www.dm2security.com. It's a small price to pay for your peace of mind. The world of name, image, and likeness can be complicated, and the high school and college athletes in the Lehigh Valley need guidance to navigate through the complexities of endorsements and sponsorships. The sports law attorneys at Gross McGinley are dedicated to educating and assisting the area's local athletes on the ins and outs of the NIL. Call 610-820-5450 or visit grossmcginley.com for more information. St. Luke's is the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for it athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's Sports Medicine to provide extraordinary care. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream. Get close to the action. Take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or myself or Dave at d11sports.com. Five 13 on the clock, 40 to 28, up by 12. But Pottsville with the basketball trying to cut into the lead. And we got a, a weak reach in on uh, Thomas. He didn't even need to reach in. Now he's got his fourth. So now if you're, if you're Pottsville, do you go right at Thomas? Uh, yeah, I, I think you do. I, I think you continue to try to attack. You don't necessarily need to go at him because you know he's going to be around the rim regardless. Uh, but you just need to keep t testing, uh, you know, the rim protectors. Chavinsky, two for two. Cuts back into the lead. He's down to ten. Kerstetter flying through the defense. They'll get a foul from behind, however. 
And that's a big foul. That's Matlock. I think that's four on him, is it not? Oh, three. And third. And now we're in one and one. So Kerstetter has 18 tonight. He averages 18. And when you get this far into your season, you know, 10, 12 games or whatever, those numbers start not lying. Yeah, it's correct. They, they tend to play out. But, I mean, it, it's big in this game. 18, 19 of the 41 are coming from him. You know, he normally has a little bit more of a supporting cast. He misses the free throw. Back to action, up by 11, through. That one gets deflected. Uh, Potts will try to deny here on the inbound, or at least put some pressure. <laughs> 11 point game. Every Blue Mountain possession, big. Yeah, and they're in no hurry here, but they have to take advantage of the pressure that Pottsville is applying. Uh, if they can drive, that's what, they're, that's what they like to do. They like to get to the rim. Uh, so if they're being overpressured, they shouldn't be afraid to take it to the basket. Feed lost a handle, gets it right back. Good job of taking at least 40 seconds off the clock right here. Yeah. one of the longest possessions they've had all game. Absolutely. They move Kerstetter back. Kerstetter lost the handle, gets it right back. And this is where Blue Mountain needs to find matchups, matchups that they can, they can deal with this pressure. And it seems like Kerstetter is the one who kind of has it right now. So 41-30 at the 3.42 mark. They took about a minute off the clock, 50 seconds or so. But they don't convert. Again, we get in that spot where here we are under four. You know, yeah. if you're going to make one last run at it, it's going to have to be back-to-back -back baskets. I don't know when. I don't remember. Pottsville's hit back-to-back -back baskets this entire yeah. game. It's been a while. At least something here to get battle back. Yeah, Coach now, Portel now is off the, time the bench. When it happens. And while they can be patient, they just can't be over-patient. They need to get... A good shot off. They don't want to force anything, but they certainly don't want to take time. That one hits the front of the rim, doesn't go by Matlock. And on the kick out, now he may see some more fouls, depending on, well, there's not that many more fouls to give, to be honest with you. That's four now, it's starting to get a little chippy. Refs immediately get in there. Again, this year for the playoffs, three divisions that we know, they'll all get in, the three division winners as usual. It used to be the three division winners on one wild card. They move it to six teams. They get three out of division one, the two champions from two and three, and the next best team from there. Uh, two and three, Kerstetter connects again. Kerstetter has 20. And with three minutes to go, and, and with what Pottsville's shown on offense so far, it looks like it might be a little too far as long as Blue Mountain's able to might make their foul shots. So one of two. Three minutes on the clock. That one almost stolen away. Great anticipation by Campbell. Yeah, that would have been big if he was able to pick that off and go the other way. That would have been huge. If you're wondering, because I am, next time they play will be the last, second to last game of the season on February 3rd. The tournament, by the way, gets underway on the 11th. They will get a look at a three. Can't buy a three. Yeah, it was right there, just short. Jump ball, possession arrow, stays here at Pottsville. Jump ball, 
Boy, have we stared at that 12-point deficit how yeah. many times? It's been there for a while. I'm also looking at these guys. They're going to be tired. They're going to need ice baths, beating each other up all game. Lost that ball underneath. And a whistle and a foul. And now if you're Potsvo, you may be at that position where you may have to foul each time and see if you can earn one out of two and get back in the mix. Yeah, they got a, a, a good look here. Just slipped out of his hands and then going the other way. They took the foul to stop the fast break. And Campbell, I believe, is undef or, uh, is, hasn't missed yet tonight from the foul line. It jinxed him there. From the corner, no. Two and change left. There, no urgency whatsoever. That one knocked away. They get it back. Coach Wartella wants a foul. He rolled up on top, I believe, on top of his leg. And the way he landed. Yeah, I think it might have been a loose ball foul. It was kind of crazy to look at. With, there was about five of them going for the ball there. I couldn't see exactly what happened. Yeah, so I don't, they'll tend to him here. Again, sometimes, you know, you feel worse than it is. and Hopefully that's all it is right now. You got tangled up in there. Yeah, especially with ankle injuries, you you roll it and you feel like you break your ankle, and then, you, like you said, you got to give it a little bit of time, and usually it's okay. So Pottsville will get North Schuylkill on f Thursday, and Jim Thorpe on Saturday. You start getting into that three games in a week, and so far, and I'm going to throw this. You've been around a long time. The weather has not played a factor at all, right? And it doesn't look like it's. Go, it's Anything not supposed to, so right. Far. So, you know, when you get those three games in a week, great to see here as he checks out of the game, but it looks like he's okay. But when you get those three games in a week and all of a sudden you get weather, sometimes it becomes four games in a week. Yeah. How hard is that? Oh, it, it's difficult. I think it maybe sometimes seems more difficult on the coaches because the players just want to play games anyway. They don't care about practice or whatever. They just want to go out there and play. Um, so if you're on a roll, it's great. But, you know, you're looking at Pottsville's next couple of games. They got big ones, big ones in the league with uh, North Schuylkill and uh, Jim Thorpe coming up. Um, so you, you never know what's going to happen. But four games in a week, no matter what, is brutal. And hopefully you come out of it healthy as well. Did you come out healthy? <laughs> I usually <laughs> was always healthy. Healthy. The team, <laughs> not so much. 42-30. There's a three. That one in the back of the rim. They missed their last four three-point shots. Three-point shooting tonight has been uh, a little suspect for both teams. So we got Kirk Setter here and Matlock twice now after foul calls going at each other a little bit. But I think that's the end of Matt, Matlock's uh, night here. And so Matlock will foul out, and he'll finish with eight points. Take a look. So we take a look here. Yep. Pretty hard foul and then a little extra afterwards. Now that's what you're going to get from these rivalries. And, uh, you know, they're going to remember that for that next match. What would you say, February? Yep, February 3rd. First hitter now has 21. You know, we talked to Coach. He's got four players, three players in double digits. And Thomas... First setter and Campbell. Today, no Com Thomas. He had four points, got in foul trouble early on. But, you know, the inadvertent horn. So 16 for Campbell and 21 for Kerstetter. And you hope what, the next time they do play or, or the next time Thomas is in a game of this magnitude that he's able to kind of understand how fouls are going to be called on, on him, the biggest guy out there, the shot blocker. Um, and he'll be able to conserve some of those fouls, be able to stay on the floor longer because he's that important to his team. Well, we always say these two teams 
do it, you know, two or three times a year. So they play in the third, and they may play in the, in the, in the tournament as well, whether it's in a championship or a semifinal. We'll yeah. have to wait and see. It's a long-range three. Much needed. Chavinsky hits it and cuts the lead to 10. Again, steal or foul here. Or maybe a walk. Or a walk. Yep. And I think Chavinsky should have been hunting his shot way earlier in the game, too, because he, he's a part of their offense that is not just that dribble drive, dribble drive, dribble drive. And, uh, you, you know, they needed that, that three-pointer earlier in the game. Hopefully he can find another one here. Well, they have been at 10 and 12 for the most part. Stays in, in front and going to eye up another one. I say that one goes. That would really quiet up the crowd. That was right there, too. Walk. It could be a little too late. Again, we've been stuck in that 10-12 for the longest time. I keep looking at my, sh my sheet, 28-18, 30-18, 34-24, 36-24, 38-26, 40-30. It's been that 10-12 mark. Yeah, and Pottsville's been, been playing extremely hard just to be able to get into those positions. They How just cannot this? get over the hump. This is a three. That one won't fall. Underneath on the rebound. Kick it back outside. Thinking about it. There's a three again. That one doesn't go. Ball loose with 49. I feel like they should just take a two. They don't need I a know. three. Take no. another three. That one doesn't go. They're giving some entertainment to the crowds. But they have not scored. I tell you what. You bury a three there. Yeah. It got really crazy interesting. Yeah, that would have been real big. Uh, but after you miss a, you know, two or three, if you can get a bucket right underneath, you qu the quick score is bigger. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. But, I mean, I guess if you're Chavinsky and you just hit two, you know, you want him to keep shooting. But now there's a chance to score without the clock moving. Yeah. You know, fans are leaving, and sometimes I always wonder. There's on a rebound. No. Another effort. That one's stolen away. That could be the difference. Actually, it goes off of both players from Blue Mountain and still this possible possession has lasted about 16 seconds. It feels like three minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. They cannot buy a bucket. They've been getting shots, and they, they just can't put it in. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of talent on, on this floor. And, again, sometimes it's just, you know, one of those days. Chavinsky, that one's going to be a little short. And there might not be enough time now. So your choice here is... Again, steal and foul or steal and let the time go out. Let's see what they decide to do. A foul and we'll walk the floor. And here on this out of bounds here, they've been going to Kirk Setter. Campbell does a good job of going to the ball and making sure that he turns to the middle of the floor because if he turns to the outside, then he could get trapped in that corner. Campbell makes the first. He's now got 17. And make it 18. So 18 points for Campbell. 21 for Kerstetter. 17 seconds on the clock. Three off the mark. And it's going to wind down the clock here. On this day, it's Blue Mountain. Yeah, they're going to wind the clock down, and they're going to win this one by 12. And that's a big win for Blue Mountain, who hasn't been able to beat Pot Pottsville in a while. So 45-33 is your final score, and we believe that's the first win by Blue Mountain against Pottsville since the 2017-18 season. It's been a long time. It has been a really, really long time. And, you know, you keep on coming into these kind of rivalry games, and that's all you ever hear, and that's all you ever hear. Hopefully that's gone, you know, for Blue Mountain. And, and they played confidently tonight. They played like they knew they were the better team tonight. Um, and and it, it showed as the game went on. Uh, Pottsville, I still think, has got a lot of talent, and I, and I like the way they play. They, they just have to be able to finish. And as they shoot, as they score, that's how their team goes. And I know that's easier said than done, but... It's tough to see a team that can score in the 60s and then score in the 30s and then score in the 60s and then, you know, in the 40s. Uh, they just have to find some consistency. Yeah, their, their losses, all five of them now have been either in the 30s or 20s. 34, 30, 24, 35, and now 33. Yeah. Um, you know, their, their, their losses in this one. Take you through the scoring. Uh, eight points for Matlock. Montone finishes with 11. 
Six points for Bainbridge. Travinsky finishes with eight. 18 for Campbell. 21 for Kerstetter. Two points for Ryan Grace. And four points for Isaac Thomas. And in a 45-33 game, 21 points of those were scored by Carson Kerstetter. And Ryan Cofield is with him now. Ryan? All right. I'm here with our player of the game, Carson Kerstetter. Carson, what does it mean for you guys to get this win tonight? Uh, I mean, it means a lot. We haven't been Pottsville in a long time. I couldn't even tell you the last time we beat Pottsville, so it just feels good to finally beat them and show the Skooka League that uh, we're a good team. After this past week, you guys had some little difficulty starting 9-0, and but then lost your last three, kind of faced some adversity. What would you guys do over this weekend to be able to get back in the gym and focus up for this big game this year? Uh, we, just, we just went back to the basics and practice. Um, every team has has their ups and downs in a season. It's just how you get through them. So, all right. Well, good game, Carson. Congrats on the win, and get back in there and take a shower. You're sweating everywhere. Thank you. All right, all right Ryan. Thanks a lot. Uh, so the Blue Eagles get the win. Dustin Work gets the win as well. 45-33. Your score. Uh, your final thoughts in this one? Uh, I thought it was you know a school cool league game. Eh? It was a blue bat Blue Mountain Pottsville game. Uh, 45-33. I think as if these when these teams play each other again, maybe you know both coaches will be able to kind of temper their intensity a little bit and get into more of a flow of basketball, um, and, and it'll make for for an even better game. So I'm excited for their ne their next matchup. I, I think it's not going to be as easy for Blue Mountain the next time they play them. Uh, we'll see. And then Blue Mountain goes on the road. They'll be at Tamaqua. Then they get Lee Heighton at home, and then North Schuylkill on the road. Again, these teams in the 4A classification this year. Our next broadcast will be on Friday night. We'll be at Liberty, excuse me, we'll be at Freedom for Liberty and Freedom, another arch rival game. That should be entertaining as well, and it always is. Um, so Jake Wartella's team falls to 7-5 and five in 4-1 and one league play. Blue Mountain increases their uh, division record to 5-1 and one, and now 10-3 and three in league play. Um, as they get ready for their next matchup. That'll do it for tonight. Final score again, 45-33 for Sean Riley, Sports Fan Base Network, for Ben Tannis, for Ryan Cofield, for everyone here at D11sports.com, including my partner, uh, Dave Micah Jr. I want to thank Doug Morgan, the athletic director. Um, the final score, 45-33. Everyone have a great night.